Uh, so I mentioned, I've already told you what's on the test. Three sections, what's wrong, and it's, uh, here, I'll write that down. So, because I don't have, I really don't have too many notes, really. Because again, I'm focusing on what's on the exam. Uh, so what's wrong? Okay, now this is kind of, a, I write a question and the answer. You see both of them. The answer is wrong, so you tell me what's wrong. Now, I'm not asking you to, re to do the question, because there's another section right after that uh, called short answer, um, where those are middle to intermediate, I'm uh, sorry, easy to intermediate problems on homeworks. Those you answer questions, this one you identify what's wrong. Now, you could identify what's wrong by reworking the question, but you're wasting time, because that's not the instructions. For example, there's a, there's a calculator question, and the speed of light is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 kilogram seconds. Okay, wrong number, wrong units. And that's another. So that's what you say. You don't have to redo the calculation. You now, if you do do redo the calculation, say, well, the speed of light is 3 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, you can do that. You will get the right answer, but you just wasted time because that's not what I asked you to do. Now, notice there's another trick. How many things were wrong? No. Yes, two things were wrong. Just identify one of them. It's not perfect, but I do try to do that. I try to do that. I try to find multiple ways to do something wrong. Um, so some of them are interpretive. Like, uh, uh, interpret this wave function, and the interpretation is written there, and the interpretation's not right, and you tell me what's wrong. Okay, and one reason to do this is because, I know this is funky, but when you're doctors, I'm assuming you all want to be doctors, your life is not going to be like a healthy 70-year-old comes in and says, hey, I feel great and I'm eating vegetables every day. And you're like, well, there's nothing wrong with you. Goodbye. That's never going to happen. You, or if you're an engineer, uh, well, if this red button never goes off, call someone and do something. 30 years later, well, the red button never went off and thanks for all the money. No, that's never going to happen. You are only useful when something goes wrong and you can fix it. That is your purpose with everything. Even if you're a manager, managers, okay, cool part is you, you, uh, we're going this way. Okay, now that that's done, now you start fixing all the problems with going in that direction. <laughs> now that's what I do. So I know that's how it works. Identifying problems is an unbelievably good skill. Identifying that there is a problem and knowing what to do about it, now you're useful. That, in all honesty, is very easy for me to write questions. <laughs> so there's that too. But seriously, it is true. You need to be able to identify what's wrong. Short answer, easy to intermediate problems on the homework. There's a calculator question. There's mostly interpretive questions. Derivation question is short, simple derivation, average cats or whatever question. Uh, and then there's two derivation questions. Um, OK, one is an average value, uh, an average value, and the other is a is a quantum mechanical something something it, it, very simple you look at the answer key it's like three lines they're, they're very easy uh, but high points so um, pay attention to that uh, there are three extra credit uh, questions um, one's a joke it's it's what's the name of my cat <laughs> just it just it just gets you rolling okay it's just funny. Another one is a little bit more serious. It's five points, and another one, three points, another one is five points, but the five pointer at the very end, free five points, all right? It should take you half an hour. So don't do that one. <laughs> do not do that one unless you're a genius and you finish the test early. Remember, you have two hours. If you're a genius and you finish the test early, then do that one. Great, why not? Hell, you probably got an A anyway. Um, if you find that you have finished the test in a half an hour and you have a half an hour left, then, then also go ahead and try it. Uh, now, I also mentioned that there's 15 questions. You have to do two, uh, uh, you have to do 12. So if I recall, don't hold me to this. I think there's, what did I say? Five out of seven, five out of six, and then two for two. Um, so if you see something and you just go badonk, you know, badonky nuts, Oh, no, 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 I absolutely forgot. I don't even know what that is. Then don't do it. No problem solved. All right, so there you go. Eh, you're okay. 
All right, any last questions? So again, calculate the fine cheat sheet. I have the cheat sheet that would prepare our table question. Um, so would you rather us study the homework more or focus more on like the uploaded lectures? Because I'm assuming it's more like explaining things, like understanding concepts rather than uh, I would agree that it's biased that way because oh, okay. what's the point if, if you don't have that, mm -hmm. right? So I would agree that uh, the interpretive stuff, which is what I try to say in class, maybe that little textbook I've written to, to the same person that, that might also be helpful uh, there. Uh, now another thing is, I, so I just wrote this test. I, I actually have one more question to write. Um, and. I, um, I, the homeworks are relatively fresh, they're not, it's not perfect, all right, but whatever's been on my mind is what I've been talking about, <laughs> by definition. So I think you're gonna find the test and lecture is gonna be pretty well connected, and sometimes, like, when I'm a little stuck on a question, I look at the homework, and I'm like, I go through the, whole, the homeworks, and I'm like, okay, what have I, you know, okay, what, what's, what's here that could be turned into a question? Um, so, um, so really, like calculator is almost non-existent. Not that you should have a problem with the calculator. Derivation, yeah, it's there. But if you can't interpret any of it, then you're definitely in trouble. Uh, question? Yeah, the answer for number one is silly. I, I never said anything about that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> answer is what the answer is. You can always figure out the answer. Uh, any other questions? Uh, okay, so tell you what, let's, um, uh, now I, I honestly tell you, I, uh, you know, I, I have a little break from this class, and I kind of feel a little rejuvenated, so after I, again, I'm not 100% done with the test, but when I looked at the test, it was mostly done, uh, I, I finished it so that I could come here and, and tell you what's on it, to be blunt, I had to finish it before this class, but you know, for the most part, yeah, one, one more is going to be written. Um, I think it's a, I feel like it's going to, work well because I really did emphasize stuff I've been talking about in classes. Again, it's just what's rattling around in my head, right? How, how else, what else am I talking about? Okay, so, and that's also why I'm filming it because it's just not the same as last year. Uh, so my review session last year is not the same as this year for obvious reasons. Okay, so, and I'm also not gonna quite go in a linear manner. I'll go mostly in a linear manner. But I don't necessarily have to in terms of like, like uh, so I'm talking about probability and we all know that quantum and probability are related, although I talked about quantum last. So anyway, uh, it'll be obvious when I'm not going linear. So um, when it comes to probability, uh, you have um, a formula that you should have hopefully learned in elementary school that the sum of probabilities for like, what are the odds of one, two, three, four, five, to six on a six-sided die? <laughs> one six plus one six plus one six plus blah, 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 it all adds up to one. Okay, now a little bit more um, unfortunate are probabilities of things that are continuous. Uh, probability that a molecule has an energy or it has a speed. Energy could be Pretty, you know, effectively any number. Speed can be effectively any number. So the statement of normalization that it is moving or not moving or that it has energy or doesn't have energy, I right, notice how I'm explaining things like a child, which is like one of the questions. Um, I'm, I'm explaining calculus expressions, again, in words. That, that's a question. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's one. Now, uh, you've had some examples of number of cats, number of photons, uh, energy, volume, uh, velocity, right? So again, yes, there's some calculus, but just look at the cheat sheet. An average of uh, property Y, so Y is like energy, Y is volume, Y is cats. Um, sum of the thing, the probability of thing times the thing. And for continuous, yes, it's a little bit more difficult. Multiply the thing you want the average of, and that's the average. Okay, <laughs> how hard is that? And it's already one or two questions right there, by the way. Uh, okay, let's do average energy. Um, so remember that's you notice how this is the same. 
this is the same symbol for expectation value in quantum. That, that there's a reason for that. Uh, and I'm, I'll get there in a minute. So the probability that something has a certain energy times the energy partial because integrals require partials. And for a gas, it, uh, because um, only in grad school do you learn about things that aren't gases, uh, average energy of a liquid or a solid is, that's like you, you need a whole class to do that. It's also a class I teach. Gases are easy and it turns out to be three halves kBT. Now notice that this is the energy, what, of a molecule or a mole? Huh? Yes, yeah, so for a mo that's one molecule's energy. And the reason, uh, so, so sometimes some versions of this class, I think your textbook, the, 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 the one from last semester might not have KV, it has R, 8.314. Remember, KV is R, 8.314 divided by Avogadro's number. It's the gas constant for a single molecule. It's just, do you want to think per mole, which is macroscopic, but I, I, the part of this class, one of the things I want to try to do is calculate, like, like, like in the Maxwell-Boltzmann, we can get what's the average velocity of a gas and now what's the pressure of a balloon of gas. So you're going from a molecular property, a property for a molecule, and from that you can calculate the property for a collective. So that's pretty powerful. So that's why I always like to work with, with molecular something, something. So that might bite you if you're not paying attention to that. Uh, but it's fine to have an RT there, it's just you better understand that's for a mole of gas. Okay, so. Now the problem, one of the early painful things is it gets, you know, look how easy all this is, and you know it's going to get a little bit more meh, is that Boltzmann figured out that nature divvies out energy by E to the natural E to the energy over KBT, um, exponentials, sine functions, functions in general can't have arguments with units. So the KDT wipes out, it has joules, wipes out the inter, uh, units of joules of energy, the minor point, whatever, just saying. Um, and then it's got to be normalized, right? Because it's a probability distribution. Uh, KDT, sorry, that's a weird looking T. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Okay, um, so you know that um, I, I often, in the Maxwell Boltzmann, I'm always like, hey, Average cats, so you, you know, what's the, what's the normalization? And you know why? It's because I knew when we were doing quantum, we often derive wave functions and they don't come, they don't naturally have normalization constants. So I just wanted to get you used to that. Plus it's some, just good math practice. And it's on the exam. All right, you're gonna do some normalizations. Now, now that we have a little quantum, you know, some of what, by the way? Any opinion? You think quantum. Yeah? No one? Because I mean, you look, yeah, like, you look at this part, you're like, oh yeah, I've seen that. What is it really? Right? So imagine I put that on the test, I didn't, but okay, so I would say I'm going to put a little I there. And what we've seen, we've seen enough quantum to know. Uh, I, I've been showing you a little bit ahead of time of this particle in a box thing. Talked about it a couple of times. So it's a box that goes from zero to L, and there's infinite potential energy on the outside. And again, I haven't formally introduced this yet, so I'm kind of speaking out of turn, but at the same time, it, it's kind of a quantum that this isn't mind-blowing. Uh, and what happens is, is that only certain wave functions fit inside of it. And, uh, and again, when I, <laughs> when I actually do introduce the particle in the box, you have certain waves that fit in the box, and they have certain energies. So now guess what this is the sum of? E to the that energy over kBT plus E to the minus that energy over kBT plus, you know what, there's an infinite norm, more of them. So you can see now that this is a sum of quantum states. Now that we've had just enough quantum, barely, I know just barely, to know that these quantum waves have to fit inside of containers um, it's kind of like our light bulb. It's like light in the light bulb. They had to fit in the container. So you've seen, you've seen waves sitting in the box a couple of times. And the waves have different energy. So, so now you have a little bit better idea what that is. Uh, not on the test, but just, just saying, oh, oh, no, no, figuring out normalizations are, is very much on the test. 
Uh, okay. Now, when you actually saw this for the first time, uh, unfortunately, the normalization was very difficult. Um, note that I can, now that I have this formula for energy, energy of what? Well, 1 half mv squared is energy, so now I've got the energy of a gas molecule. A lot of you got this question on the homework. It's gas molecule because I'm not including any, anything else. It's just 1 half mv squared. That means it's a gas molecule. If it wasn't a gas molecule, I'd have to include, like, like a solid, I'd have to include bonds, ener bonding energies, interaction energies with molecules with other molecules. But perfect gases don't interact with each other. So their energy is all kinetic. So that means I can actually work with this thing. Uh, and also I have to do is plug in 1 half mv squared for energy. So now I've got a distribution of velocity. It's kind of cool, right? I have this distribution of energy. But now, just by putting in 1 half mv squared, now it's velocity. Now I know about velocity. You can do this trick with anything. You can do it with rotational energy. So now you know how much things rotate. Translate, that's this. Anyway, any type of nuclear energy, you can do this with nuclear energy. We did it with uh, photon energy. So we've done this a zillion times. So, but unfortunately, <laughs> your first introduction was Maxwell Boltzmann, which is a gas velocity. And I have to admit, uh, I'm blanking out, 1 half mv squared. And I have to admit that what was unfortunate was that the normalization was one of the more complicated ones. The two didn't look right, it bothered me. Uh, so the normalization part was actually one of the most complicated ones that you run into uh, where you have x, y, and z. And uh, so I don't really like beginning the class with this so much. Uh, because there's other easier examples of Maxwell Bo of, 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 of um, using Boltzmann averaging, um, like the black body, but then the black body has that problem of number of modes per wavelength, and um, and that ends up taking something that kind of started out relatively easy and it ended up making it difficult. So I never really know what to do. Okay, so again, cool that I can insert 1 half mv squared for energy. Now I've got a thing with velocity in it. Now I know about velocity. That's awesome. Just unfortunate that the, normaliz the normalizer is, is definitely was the most complicated. Of all the examples of Boltzmann this and that that we had, this one actually had the most complicated normalizer because velocity comes in the form of, of a vector. And, and so I have to look at it in terms of x, y, z. Now, I noticed some of you, and you made a mistake that I, I really wanted you to make, if you were going to make it, was I had, what, a um, number of A students, right? Something like that, I forgot. Anyway, something like that. And some of you decided, well, it has to be X A students, Y A students, and Z A students. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. It's just number of students, right? So again, this one is unfortunately kind of complicated because velocity is a three-dimensional vector. But number of photons, number of students, volume of coffee, you really don't see that anywhere else. <laughs> so, and nor, nor should you. Why would you, right? Now, I understand that you wanted to make other examples look like this one because it's comforting, but it also was unfortunately wrong. Okay, now what you got, and, and by the way, this is, um, I don't have anything like this on the exam. This is already... I'm already, all the stuff I'm writing right now uh, is already more complicated than anything I have on the test, by the way. Uh, but if you can hack it, then you're going to be fine. Uh, I do have a few questions of average cats per house or pigs in blanket, something like that. I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that in a second. Um, okay, so when we were doing Maxwell Boltzmann, we solved the normalizer. That's here. Um, but we have to multiply, or if I'm going to integrate it, we have to multiply by partials. And uh, actually, actually, I think that's because you know I have these partials on bottom, so I think I need these partials on the top. Um, actually, I'm never really sure about that. So anyway, uh, these are now here. Uh, the ones on bottom just get in integrated out to this um, normalization constant. And the problem is, is that 
I've got change in x, change in y, change in z, but I've got the net, you know, it's like, it's like this is like dx, dy, dz, and this is a radius, right? Uh, so the way you do this is with those Jacobians, and um, normally I have a lot of Jacobian questions on exams, those of you who have my previous exams. I didn't put any of them on this test, so I'm not going to say, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I normally put a lot of questions like that, I just didn't, didn't feel like it this year. So that's why I'm telling you, um, I always do these, I always write the new set of notes because I did something different. Anyway, so now you may recall from the video that I, it took me a lot. I drew all those illustrations, by the way, with Adobe Illustrator. I colored them with a Adobe Photoshop. Uh, one thing I would encourage you all, uh, you know, you can, I think you have access to some extent to those programs while you're a student. Those are good skills to have, and it's kind of fun to play around with. Uh, I like digital art quite a bit, and it's useful to my career. Um, you know, I hopefully gave you some decent looking figures because, I, you know, that's nicer. If you're happy, I'm happy. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that was the, that was the Boltzmann, uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Again, the questions on the exam like this are not <laughs> remotely this hard, not even close. It's like ridiculous how much easier the question I have like this on the exam is. And it's a silly example, but it's a silly example because it's, you know, for one, it's easier. And oh, here, let me let me actually uh, finish up one more little example of this thing. Um, now, what I want to do is, oh yeah, look at it, look at it. The integral, you know, that's the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. And of course, if I uh, integrate it from zero to infinity, and that you know meters per second, I should include in units on the limits, by the way, and the Lemons have the same units as the partial. That's just how calculus works. If you weren't, if that wasn't something on the top of your head, now you know. Um, the integral should be one. Okay. So on the exam, you have a much easier question, and it's going to be a silly one just because it's easier to do that. And you have to normalize it, and then you have to do something like calculate an average. So let's see. What let's let's, let's check this. So let's take all these units. Uh, let's take all the constants out. Don't forget them because that's the number one way you screw up. Uh, constants v squared e to the minus mv squared over 2kvt. Okay, again, zero to infinity. And um, now you've got the cheat sheet open. I don't mind if you, you might want to rip it off the back of the test and then have it um, to the side. You don't have to leave it stable, I don't care. Uh, okay, so now you're looking at the identities in the cheat sheet. Much better than what you have programmed in your calculator uh, because I know they're right. Uh, actually, I'm going to have the test double checked uh, right after by one of the TAs. Okay, again, some, yeah, occasionally I have some people try to, you can actually do this by uh, integration by parts, and I swear to God, every year I got like five people. To sit there and start trying to solve it, fine. I mean, you still get the right answer, but what I see every time is that when people start actually, instead of using this identity, they start doing their own uh, integration by parts or whatever technique, they get lost and they screw it up. I can't give you full credit. Why would you do that? I never understand that. Anyway, so what do we got? We got 4 pi m over 2 pi kvt to the three halves. Again, those are the constants. I brought them back because I didn't want to forget them. Okay, pi to the half. Uh, and again, uh, okay, over two. Now the other trick is to recognize what A is, and of course A is um, M over two kBT. Now on the exam, if you get something like this, it's not nearly this hard. If you just leave it like this, this is, this is the answer. Um, you know, Simplification, right? So, you know, doing your algebra. Why do we do that? Well, it's useful, but think about it. Back in the day, th this class comes from curriculum designed from 1930 to, to 1950. They didn't have calculators. You want to put this into a calculator? That sucks. It could take like five hours. 
<laughs> and that's not a joke. That's, you know, they, they didn't have calculators. It could take forever. Simplification was a very, very necessary thing. It's not anymore. You can certainly plug in these numbers in your five cent calculator on your phone and get the right answer. So I don't really care about simplification. But if we did do it, um, I always do this piece by piece. So two and four is two pi uh, square root of pi, pi on bottom. Pi times square root of pi is pi to the three halves, pi to the three halves on bottom. Anyway, I do this piece by piece. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, and, um, oh, oh, then I did that too. Um, and I made, I, wanted, I made a slight mistake. What did I, I made a slight mistake somewhere. What did I do? Um, anyway, so sorry about this. I don't, uh, I don't see what I did wrong. Um, and you see what I did wrong? I screwed up something. Anyway, well, look, I'm not going to figure it out, but the answer is one, right? So sorry about that. I, I'm, um, I'm missing a factor of two. It's, it's, I must have, I must have messed up the identity. I guess it must be a four. Sorry about that. Anyway, so that's the, um, that's the average. <laughs> Here I am. Tell me you better do it right. Look at me. I just screwed it up. Sorry about that. And that's the average velocity, right? Yeah. Right? No. What, what do you mean? Isn't the average velocity just the number one? No, that's the probability. Yeah, it's the probability. Remember, it probably, well, despite the fact that I just screwed up. Oh, God. That's, or maybe I'm not going to show the tape. Um, <laughs> I'll figure it out. Um, what you mess up when I have you do, I have you do two average value calculations. If you forget to multiply by the thing you want the average value of, then you're going to get the number one because all you're doing is you're showing it's normalized. Right? So that's, oh, is that one? I'm probably using the wrong identity because I'm doing two different questions at once. Anyway, so. Remember that if you just integrate a distribution function, you get the number one, but if you want the average value of velocity, you've got to multiply the whole thing by velocity. You want the average value of cat, multiply it by cats. Pigs, multiply by pigs. And um, of course, the limits, I'll make sure you know. And in this case, you get a different identity. And of course, then you get 8 kt over pi m. So anyway, um, so just, just look out for that. Uh, there's not much to it. Um, uh, let's see. So other examples, of course, were uh, energy for photons is number of photons times hc over lambda. And so that the probability distribution, so this is Maxwell-Boltzmann. I generally have not had Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution questions on the exam um, because it was kind of this Although this part, what I'm doing right now, uh, sorry, what am I doing? NHC over, um, this part, the Boltzmann average part was actually really quite simple. Um, it was all those, those mode things and like that homework question you had on hospital patients and whatnot. That's very difficult. So that's a very hard question. That's an example of a very hard question that is not like on the test, because that would take you the entire test period and you probably still wouldn't get through it. So Boltzmann averaging of photons is easy for max for the Planck distribution, but the rest of it turned into kind of a nightmare. And I, I know that, so that's why that's not so much on the test. Normally I don't even have any Planck distribution question on the test, but this time I did I do have one. I do have one question. Anyway, uh, now what's one thing to note about the Planck distribution is that this is an example of, you know, it's actually easier because you don't have to turn this uh, normalization to an integral. It's just a sum. You just look up a, the, the identity, you know, just there it is, and it turns into this. 
So, not much to it. Uh, 1 minus e to the minus hc over lambda kt. And then you still have energy left. Okay, so, so there you go. That's just another example. And uh, let's see, what can I say about this? Uh, so remember that one little mathematical thing about mathematics, uh, integrals or summations. Whatever you're summing, whatever you're integrating, needs to be gone in the result. Um, is this right or is it one over this? Right, now I'm blanking. No, 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 this is right. Anyway, so notice that in Planck, in Planck, uh, your Maxwell-Boltzmann velocity is basically your Planck uh, wavelength. Uh, sorry, your Planck number. Sorry, number number of photons, and your Maxwell Boltzmann mass is now like your Planck uh, wavelength. So in Maxwell Boltzmann, you know you're always messing with velocity. You're integrating velocity, averaging velocity, blah blah blah. In Planck, you're doing all that with number of photons. And that's why you go from uh, having to integrate velocity to summing number of photons, because photons come in zeros, ones, and twos, and threes, and fours. Uh, just like Maxwell-Boltzmann, every little Maxwell-Boltzmann curve has an associated mass. Here's the, here's the uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann for helium. Here's the Maxwell-Boltzmann for nitrogen. If you look at the answer key to the homework, you notice that a lot of you had either helium or nitrogen. So I have to pick a mass. Now here, you have to pick a wavelength. So there, there's all kinds of analogies. So when you, the main thing, the reason I'm just bringing this up, this isn't important. It's just that you don't want to look at any of this. You know, this and this is like fundamentally different. When they're almost absolutely the exact same thing with just minor differences and that the normalization here is just really actually easier. But again, let me be bloody honest. That then, point, questions, point, this, that did turn bloody awful. That's why it's not, uh, this part is not on the test. Like that crazy homework on COVID patients per hospital and all that is not on the test. That's a very hard question. It takes a very long time. Obviously, you couldn't do it on two hours, so I didn't ask. But um, when you look at the average, average energy, so normalized, so this times energy summed, and that's done in class, it's in the little textbook. Uh, it ends up looking like this. And again, this isn't hard, but the problem is no light bulb looks like this. Uh, and the answer was, was that the light bulb itself, like these very long, like infrared wavelengths, light bulbs aren't, aren't big enough. <laughs> the light bulb's two centimeters. That's actually Actually, two centimeters is actually about infrared. That, that, that's a legit infrared wavelength, but you get my point. Um, there are, uh, let's see, let me pick a, a long wavelength. That would be an infrared. Uh, and oddly enough, there's one, two, three. So I'm doing it like an XYZ. I'm doing an XYZ thing. Maybe that wasn't obvious, but um, Z, uh, X, and what? Oh, that looks awful. God, sorry. Uh, anyway, um, right now it bothers me. Now I've got to do it or I'm going to freak out. There we go. Z, X, and Y. It still looks awful, doesn't it? Okay, so now I've got to do the little things. All right. So what you got out of Maxwell Boltzmann was that there were a certain number of modes per wavelength. And here, even for the longest wavelengths, there's three modes. So that part was easy, right? That there's three, two, you know, the thing is two centimeters and there's three two centimeter wavelength waves. One for F, one for Y, and one for Z. I'm like, oh, all right, yeah, I get that. When you got to shorter wavelengths, it got a lot more complicated. And again, that's why I'm not putting that on the test. It's, it's, it's really something, right? So number of modes per wavelength, ends up looking something like this. It was like 1 over lambda to the fourth power, I think, something like that. Um, and so, 
So there you go, number of votes per lambda. And then this times that is actually times this times that is the result, the actual Planck distribution, which really weirdly looks like just like a maximum Boltzmann distribution. So that's equal to Planck. Not using the board too well. Lambda. Always label your axes. So then it looks like a, a light bulb spectrum, like it should. Um, okay, so, and then with that, I want to point out uh, that I do have, let, let me give you a little bit of a hint about some of the silly questions. I do have silly average questions, and that's because I do, you know, this whole average velocity, average photons, Okay, maybe three or five of you are going to go to grad school in chem, which is awesome, but most of you aren't. And so I don't know how much of this is useful to you. It really isn't, to be blunt. I know it's not. But the concept on how to properly take averages is. And that's why I throw, how much does it cost a hospital to have COVID patients? And those that model was actually very realistic. And what I wanted, because I'm also got, remember I just got an MBA. It's, if you're gonna be managers, you're gonna move up. You're gonna be a manager, you're gonna have budgets. And that question I had, the hard question on, what was it, number three, where the variation in patients actually comes into the cost, that's actually a very real thing. So you should know that. You see, all this average stuff is actually useful. Because again, I don't think you really need to know the average velocity of a gas to be successful. Even if you actually end up in grad school, you still don't need to know that. Okay, so on the exam, what I do is I've got the average of whatever. Cats or something, right? And again, because um, being able to think properly about how things distribute and how to calculate averages of that distribution is actually an incredibly useful thing no matter what you end up doing. Okay, so what happens is it comes in three parts. You're going to be given, given a probability of, of whatever. Okay, two, you normalize it. You normalize it. And number three, you use it. Use it, use it for your average. Okay, so that's one of the derivation questions, and there you go. Very, very, very straightforward. Okay, um, I don't have terribly long left. Uh, notice that I haven't even started talking about quantum yet, but um, I usually do this on purpose. It's been a while since we, since you had Maxwell Boltzmann. Well, I mean, you this class hasn't been going on for that long at all. Uh, so I tend to emphasize the stuff earlier and not so much the stuff more recently because you've seen the stuff more recently, more recently. So I'm not going to spend too much time on quantum uh, other than to emphasize that a probability distribution, uh, just like Maxwell-Boltzmann, is a wave function squared, absolute value of a wave function squared. Now, unfortunately, one other thing you have to do is some complex mathematics. So that's a complex conjugate times the wave function. And I've thrown every type of curveball at you that I can. You know that um, EVIKX, you've seen that a gazillion times. The complex conjugate is e to the minus IKX. And what's the other con what's the other wave function you've seen to death? Sine KX or cosine KX, and the complex conjugate of sine KX is still sine KX because there's no I. Uh, your class actually did a really good job not getting tripped up with that. Every other class I've ever had choked violently. They, all, they, they said, okay, well, I'm just going to put a minus sign. Something has to change. No, that was wrong. Okay. Now, I also want to point out that um, like probability, an expectation value, which has oddly the same symbology as our average value from both and this and that, ends up in the case of in the case of position, and our wave functions are functions of position, ends up just being this, probability distribution times the thing you want the average of. This time it's just absolute value of wave function squared, so sine squared kx uh, times x dx. There you go. Probability thing you want the average of. Ta-da! For the, for the 
like 50th time you're seeing it, right? So hopefully when you see it on the exam, you're gonna be sick of it and be like, yes, 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 I know what to do. Good, I hope you're, I hope you're sick of it because you're just gonna sleep your way to an A. Now recall that this is actually a, a position, a expectation value of position is a little bit unique because really the equation for expectation value is this uh, wave function complex conjugate operator wave function, that's the real thing. It's just that if, if the operator, if we're trying to get average momentum, the operator is a derivative and you have, to, you have to just work with this as it is. Now remember you had an early homework math practice question, remember it? Where I threw all kinds of little derivatives. I had like x dx x, a double derivative, double derivative x, blah, 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 blah. I threw a whole bunch of like permutations at you. It was because of this, so that you got used to doing this. Notice that if the operator's position, that's why this one's a little bit easier to understand because I can, I can actually move it, I can hop it left or right of the wave functions. Um, you can't do that with derivatives. Anyway, that's just how you connect quantum to Maxwell Boltzmann, average this, average that. So it's really the same thing, again, with just a minor, minor, minor tweak of, um, I mean, there's really no tweak if you happen to be doing position, but that one, again, is a little bit special. You have to be a little bit more careful uh, with operators, and you have to just do it that way. And that equation's on the on the uh, cheat sheet. Um, going a little backward with uh, quantum because I just wanted to connect how it how it connects to averages. But remember that quantum is all about De Broglie wavelengths. That h over the momentum of a object with mass is an associated wavelength. And again, this is really bizarre because it's saying that matter is a wave. Einstein says waves are like matter, de Broglie says matters are like waves. Okay, so that means that you describe matter, and, and it's always going to be an electron to be blunt, but people have done studies with atoms and C60 and things like that and found their wavelength. Uh, but for us, it's just going to be an electron. And electrons have mass. Um, you have an associated um, wave function, and it's going to be like cosine kx. Um, and these work in diffy cues. So notice that I introduced diffy cues in, in the Planck distribution. Uh, all of quantum mechanics is really this equation here, that an operator, which is like like the Hamiltonian or like momentum times an eigenfunction is an eigenvalue times the, the wave function again. So it's a diffy q. It's a pain in the rear because the wave function comes is on the left and right. So that's why this is like so freaking weird. It's so hard to engineer. Like you gotta take the double derivative of the wave function and get the wave function still. Yeah, but cosine does that. I mean, that, that's weird as heck. Norma, I, I would hear that, I'd be like, you gotta be kidding me, that's, that's, that's never gonna happen. But it actually does happen. Sine, cosine, e to the plus or minus i, k, x, that works. I got four different functions. Recall that if the operator under consideration is, is the Hamiltonian, uh, it's special because we think of it as reality itself, so the wave functions are expressions of reality, the eigenvalue happens to be energy. So that's special. Uh, now we talked about how you engineer the kinetic energy to be minus h bar squared over 2m. It's, it's a really kind of awkward lecture to give. There's not much I can do about that. Um, now, it's really a statement of kinetic energy plus potential energy is total energy. And again, we see that eigenvalue deal appearing because there's, you know, the wave function the wave function is on both sides. Here, I can, I can do this. Wave functions are on both sides. So the wave function gets operated on and it still comes back. Now, we're also not going to worry about potential energy. We're not there yet. We're not going to be there for a while. So just forget potential energy for now. And this is what we're doing right now. We'll get over this in a week or two. And again, the wave functions, because it's a 50Q, I show you what the solutions are. 
And, um, and the last that I can just say is, um, and I've already talked about expectation values. Now remember that these can be interpreted and based on the interpretation, we accept them or reject them. Moving left, moving right, not moving. Not that they don't have kinetic energy, that they all have kinetic energy. This one's moving, the plus one's moving to the right, minus one's moving to the left. The cosine and sine, you just don't know whether it's moving left or right. It has energy, you can calculate it, but you don't know whether it's moving left or right, so that's why those wave functions are allowed. Wave functions that you can't have, you cannot have wave functions do this, so sometimes you can find valid wave functions to the Schrodinger equation. You can find valid ones, but they do something stupid. Like they're not smooth, they're not continuous, or they fly off to infinity and you reject them. So last bit, and so, so listen, 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 and you might wonder why I'm saying that. Sometimes you can find functions that are okay with the Schrodinger equation but you reject them because they do something stupid. Here, these guys are okay, but you can imagine maybe I can find some that aren't. So you gotta recognize that. Okay, that's it.